Hey guys, it's Ben the Coin Geek at Old Pueblo Coin, and in the conversation with the marketplace, you find out that people really kind of enjoy the crack out challenges. So, here we have for you a crack out challenge. We got three different grading services today. We got an old PCGS holder, and an old PCI holder, and an old NGC holder. And you'll notice one thing oftentimes, I'll actually have the holder here so you can look at it. You know, and I don't, and the reason for that is because all three of these coins were actually in a guy's Dansko album, and he had cracked them out himself, and you can see this little bit of tape residue right there, that's what's on this holder, some tape residue, and so that's actually, it was taped in his album, this one you can make it out a little bit also, there's a little tape residue there. So we're going to look and see what happened with these coins that uh, technically I didn't have to crack out. I just had to take them out, an, out of an album. This 1913 dime was in an old school PCGS 63 holder at one point in time. And we'll take a closer look at this guy and see. You, know, you got a coin with really clean fields overall. Uh, full luster, full bloom on there. And just a real clean coin. Now, I'm not going to give you values on these guys. Not exactly, not yet, right? But look at this. Look at this, huh? A 3 to a 5. That's a that's a doozy of a jump uh, as far as numerically. We actually very rarely get multiple grade jumps on stuff. Um, you know, <laughs> unless we're going down, right? That's like the rule. <laughs> we, can, we can go down two grades, but up two grades, no, nah, don't, don't do that. So, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let you guys guess the price differences on these coins once we get to the end and see kind of what happened. Uh, so anyway, real pretty coin. Um, I was I was kind of surprised. Not that I don't think the coin could make a five, but I was kind of surprised to see it go from a three to a five because you know just because we don't have that happen very frequently. Uh, but overall, really contact free, very lustrous, pretty coin. Uh, <laughs> I love saying that. I sound like a parrot. Pretty coin. Next up is his 1888. Uh, and this one's really cool. So this old PCI holder, which was fun. Um, Semi-PL or semi-PL and 100% toned. You know, it's kind of fun that they had those extra little monikers on there to tell you what the coin looked like or looks like. It does have a touch of PL to it. Just a hint. And it is 100% toned. It has some just old school gentle toning to it. It's it's dark at certain angles. You can see it's not the super brilliant. You know, it's one of those ones where you kind of have to get the light on it to make the color pop. You know, and a lot of coins tone over that way, so it's not the not the most surprising thing, especially coins from this time period. You can see a little bit of the PL there on the coin. But overall, uh, you know, a relatively contact free. Uh, you have some of the contact marks are hidden in the toning. A couple little spots there by the one in, uh, in the date. But overall, it's got good eye appeal, I think. You know, but if you don't like the darker toning or you want toning that's just going to pop, the coin's not going to be for you. But we went here from a 3 to a 4. So we've got uh, another plus on the scoreboard here. Last but not least, I've got this V-nickel. V-nickels are tough, tough, tough. They're tough to grade. They're tough to get a good grade on. I'll put it that way. You know, V-nickels don't come with a ton of lusters lots of times. This one's got a birthmark on it. I see that. There's a, I think there's a medical term for that. But uh, it's got some original toning right there on the south side of the coin on the back, kind of from uh, 5 to 6 o'clock. Moving in towards the V, and then the obverse, really lustrous, pretty mark free. And we're going to go ahead and look and see that you've got really a clean coin overall, a decent strike. Uh, nickels do come flat at times, but uh, you can see the hair details real pretty on the coin. Um, you know, not too bad, a little spot there in front of her nose, but that's almost like a tiny carbon mark. Overall, really clean. Originally, NGC had called this um, a 4. PCGS called this a 5. Now, here's the big question, the big query for you guys, is 
What's the difference in price on these coins from the price that they were to the price that they are now? Who had the biggest jump? Let's put it that way. And uh, I, I'm just going to use gray sheet numbers just so I have one, one number source and see um, kind of how we went. This guy here, the 88 and uh, 63 is 200. And uh, this is like the price is right. We went from 200 to 340. That's a difference of $140 on that one. And we've got the uh, the two point, the two pointer, which you think would be pretty good. So this one goes from 155 to 300 gray sheet. That's a difference of 145. So not a huge jump, and that's true on most of the common date coins in that series. That's kind of the kind of price point jump in the gray sheet. So you're looking at 145 dollars. So that one's got you beat by five bucks. And in the gray sheet, the V nickels going from a four to a five goes from 170 to 335 so that's a hundred and sixty five dollar jump so that's actually your biggest winner in a, in a one point jump and there, there are lots of coins if you just look up and down the gray sheet where it's not going to be exact you know the gray sheet is is not a not the bible but it's 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 a good guide um when you look at it you're going to see some of these price point differences but uh you're gonna you're gonna notice that on a lot of the common date common date v nickels that's going to be the price point jump so anyways thanks so much guys for watching i've been the coin geek you can subscribe by clicking on the owl button in the corner and watch more videos on the right side of the screen thanks